start by hitting the plus sign from the Procreate home screen. That's going to bring up this menu and you just want to ignore anything that's here because we want to create a new canvas for your project and you're going to do that by hitting this icon in the top right and that's going to bring up a menu. There's a couple things here uh, on the left but the main thing you want to worry about are your dimensions. By default it's usually in pixels but because you're making printed pieces I think you could actually work in inches. So I'm going to go down to the left and change our unit of measurement to inches. It's really important to know what size of thing you're creating. In this case, we can go for a five by seven card as an example. The reason this is important is because anything that you create is going to be accurate to the scale of your final piece. So you'll be able to tell how thick a line should be or how big something should be in proportion to the final size of the thing that you're creating. In this case, it's a five by seven card. The next thing down is DPI. DPI stands for dots per inch. It's really, really important that you make sure that this is at least at 300 DPI. If you create your artwork at 72 DPI or lower, when you go to actually use it, it might be unusable. So it's really important to make sure if this doesn't say 300 to just go ahead and change that to 300. Then you're able to create your file. And there you have it. You're going to have a five by seven inch document that is set to 300 DPI so that you can start creating your artwork and know that it's going to be at the right size and resolution. Always, always do this when you start a project. Don't put it off. Don't skip the step. Uh, you know, if you want to get into making something quickly, it's really important to set it up correctly because if you skip the step, then you might end up with artwork that you can't use after you put a lot of time into drawing something. So it's really important to set this up first. The next thing we're going to talk about is inking a drawing from a sketch or a photo. Um, a lot of times I'll sketch right in Procreate, but I know that you like to work traditionally a lot of times, so you might be working from a sketch uh, that you're doing on paper. If that's the case, you could just take a picture with your iPad. Uh, and then you would be able to insert it into this file. So this is the 5x7 file um, that we created in the other video. And we're just going to add a photo reference of a sketch. Actually, the sketch that I did of this dog with a hat. So we're going to go over to the wrench. We're going to hit insert a photo. And then we're just going to pick one of our photos. And that's going to insert it into the file. The next thing we're going to do is add a layer so that we're going to be able to draw over top of this sketch. So we're going to open our layers up here, hit the plus sign, and now we have two layers, one with the photo and one where we're actually going to draw our lines. It's really important not to draw your lines on the same layer as the photo because then the photo and the drawing will be sandwiched together and you won't be able to get them apart. It's also a good idea to give yourself a little bit more visibility on what you're doing by reducing the opacity of the photograph. Um, so we're going to do that by hitting the N over here, and that's going to open an adjustment panel. The only thing we're going to do is slide the opacity down, just so we could still see the drawing, but it's a little less distracting. So mine's at 30%, but you could just do whatever feels right to you. And then you want to make sure that your inking layer, or your where you're going to make your thick black lines, that layer is selected and not your photo layer. So it is selected and we can close that out then. The 
One more thing we might want to do before we get started with our drawing is sizing our photo reference to be more appropriately sized within our canvas um, because we are making something for a 5 by 7 card. This photo is just a little smaller than we'd like it to be. So we're going to do that by going to the layers again. With the photo layer selected, we're going to hit the arrow tool over here. And then we'll be able to pinch and zoom with two fingers to resize and reposition this drawing. So that feels a little bit better to me. I'm going to uh, go back in my layers and make sure that my drawing layer is selected and my photo layer is deselected again. The next thing we're going to do is talk about brushes. So because the final destination of this piece is to be vectorized, to be prepped for a letterpress plate, we're going to select our brush accordingly. A lot of times when I draw for fun, I like to use really textured brushes, but that's really not a good idea for this type of art. We want really clean, solid lines. And there's a couple default brushes in Procreate that will give you that. So I'm just gonna show you two. The first one is the Studio Pen, which is under the inking option. Here's Studio Pen. What Studio Pen lets you do is have a pressure, thick and thin lines. So if you want some lines that have varying weight or different thicknesses, the Studio Pen is a good way to go and you can see it's got really clean black lines. The other pen I'm going to show you is the um, monoline pen, which is actually under calligraphy. And monoline has similar characteristics, except it is not pressure sensitive at all. So even if I press really heavy or lightly, it's going to stay the same, stay the same thickness, which is really useful sometimes. That's actually what I'm going to be using for this drawing. And the nice thing is that in Procreate, it records your recent brushes, so you could see Studio Pen and Monoline are here really easily available. The next thing I'm going to do is show a couple control options. So over on the left, you have your, your controls. So when you draw, you can adjust the radius or the size of the brush here and the opacity over here, but we wanna make sure we stick with 100% opacity for this project. And then you also have undo and redo over here. I usually just like to tap with two fingers to undo. The final really useful setting is uh, the stabilization of the brush. So if you open your brush and you click right on it, uh, there's a bunch of options over on the left. You wanna to go to stabilization and under streamline, you can adjust the amount. So right now our streamline is really low. What that means is that it's gonna pick up on all the little subtleties of, of my hand, um, and it's not really gonna smooth it out much at all. In contrast, you can crank your stabilization really far up, and that's going to help you make really smooth, accurate lines, and any jitters that your, might, your hand might have, Procreate is going to remove those jitters. So the plus of using stabilization is that it smooths everything out, but you might also lose some accuracy. So if you feel like it's smoothing out too much or you can't get the detail that you want, you can go in here and adjust your stabilization, maybe turn it down if, if you want a little bit more personality in, your, in the drawing of your lines. We have our photo inserted, we have a new layer for our line art, we have our brush selected, and we have all of the settings for our brush all set up and ready to go. Now we're ready to start inking our drawing and doing some of the final line art. Alright, so now we have our final line art and we're ready to turn off our photo reference and that's going to leave us with nice bold clean black lines on a background 
that is, uh, you know, something we could change or turn off completely. So there's a transparent background. And then we're ready to move into our next steps of this project. All right, so looking at my photo reference here, you could see that there were a few areas that I colored in with a pencil uh, to get more of a gray tone. And for this project, I think it would be great to have two plates, one that has black lines and then another plate for the color. Ultimately, with letterpress, that's going to be two separate physical plates. But the great thing about digital is we can work in layers and simulate what that would look like and also prepare the file so that when we go to do our color separations later, it's a lot easier. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, bring up that line art that we just worked on. So here is the line art. It is completely black and white on a transparent background. And I'm going to add another layer. So now we have three layers. We have our photo layer, which we really don't need anymore. Uh, then we have our black line layer and we have our color layer. So it's good practice just to have your black layer at the top because um, that's how it would be when it's printed also. So to move your layer order, you just tap and hold on the layer and then that's gonna make it movable. And you could just drop it wherever you want it. Now we have our layer where our color is going to be on the very bottom and our black layer above it. The next thing you're going to do is set up your reference layer. So Procreate calls it a reference layer. I'm not sure why, but that's whatever layer Procreate is supposed to look at when you're coloring stuff in or drag and dropping color. In this case, we want our line art to be our reference layer. So we're going to tap on the layer just once, which is going, you know, in this empty space here. So not on the end, but in the empty space. Then we're going to check reference in this menu. Now you can see it says layer two and it says reference. What that's going to allow us to do is go to our color layer and drag and drop within the lines, even though it's on a separate layer. So it's super convenient. I'm gonna pick a color. I think I wanna go with like a kind of a rusty orange color. And then I'm in my, my color layer here, and I'm just gonna start dragging and dropping. So I want some color in the arm, in the spots, in the ear, in the boots, and I think in the flower as well. So it's important to note that this only works in areas where the shape is completely closed. So you could see there's no gaps in any of my line work. If there were, which I could just show real quick, here's a circle completely closed. Here's a circle with an opening. And then we'll do another circle that's like almost closed, but maybe just has a little tiny hair open, just for an example. So if I go back to my color layer, if I drag and drop the color in here, great, it stays within that. If I drag and drop it within here, it leaks out of the hole. So, um, you know, you could go back to your line work and close that up. Close that hole. And then it would stay within. Now, in some cases, there's these tiny, tiny little areas that just are a little bit open. And you can ta drag and hold. And then you can adjust the threshold by dragging left and right. And it will sense that you need a little bit of forgiveness there and not fill it in. But if the gap is too big, this is not going to work. So it's better just to close up all your lines. All 
Awesome, now we have our black line layer and our brown color layer. And you'll see there is a clear separation so we can actually turn off the black and all of the um, color will still be there or we can turn off the color and all the black will still be there. So they are completely separate. And they line up perfectly. This is how our final card turned out. I added a little bit of lettering and some flowers around the edge. And from this point, we are ready to take it into uh, Illustrator. So we're going to transfer this to our computer. I've got my laptop set up with AirDrop turned on and I'm gonna use AirDrop to share these layers to my laptop so I can continue working over there. I'm going to go to my layers, turn off my background, so I just have the transparent layer. And then I'm just gonna transfer one layer at a time. So I'll start with the color layer which means I will turn off all the other layers except for the color layer. I'm ready to share this now, so I'm going to go to the wrench at the top, go to share, and go to PNG because PNG has a transparent background. Then you'll see my MacBook Pro will show up as an option for sharing with AirDrop. And then you heard my laptop receive the file. So I'm going to do that with the other layer now, turn off the color, turn on the line layer, go to share, share PNG, share with AirDrop. Now both of those layers have been independently shared with my laptop and I can continue working over there. Now we are on our laptop and we can start working in Illustrator to get this ready for a plate. The first thing we're going to do is create a new file and we're going to create this file to be the same size as our Procreate document which is the same size as the final physical object that we're planning on printing. So the first thing we're going to do is change it from pixels to inches just like we did in Procreate. We're going to change the width to 5 and the height to 7. And uh, Illustrator is a vector environment, so you don't need to worry about DPI. Here is our 5 by 7 document, and we are going to start by importing our images that we exported from Procreate. So you can drag and drop these in. I'm dragging them from uh, Finder into the file. There is our line art, and here is our color layer. So I'm going to select both of these just by dragging with my arrow over both of them. And then I'm going to align them to the center of each other vertically and the center of each other horizontally. Now they are aligned just like they were in Procreate and with them both still selected I'm going to drag them to be aligned with the artboard. The other way that you could do that is by selecting align to artboard and then hitting the horizontal and vertical align tool and that'll get you the same result. The next thing we're going to do is add crop marks to our artwork. Uh, an important part of this process is registration. Um, we want this ultimately to be registered uh, with the color and the line layer together when you go to do the letterpress process. So to add the crop marks, which are also going to act as registration marks, we will just drag to select both of our layers. Now they're both selected, and we'll go up to Effects and go to Crop Marks. Now you'll see that both layers have crop marks. Now that our artwork has crop marks, we can separate them from one another 
because we need to prepare this to be two separate plates and uh, we have everything lined up so even if we move them apart from one another um, we know that they will register perfectly when we use the plates so I am just going to click on one of these and then while holding shift on my keyboard drag this over now that we have the line art and the color layer next to each other we can select both of them and group them and then we can go to the artboard tool and click on the group anywhere and that will create a new artboard that encapsulates the registration marks and the two layers and then we can click on the original artboard and delete it so this represents the plate that we're going to order and both of these things are grouped up on the same plate but in two different areas with uh, two different sets of registration marks. We are now going to get into vectorizing this artwork. So we created this in a raster or a pixel based program and we want to convert them to vector which is the preferred file type for uh, boxcar where you have your plates ordered. You can send boxcar bitmap images, but that's a whole nother process. And because of the style of this art lends itself really well to vector, I think it's a good choice for us to do a vector trace on these. The way we're going to do that is by doing a little preparation first. We're gonna go ahead and ungroup these because we don't need them to be grouped anymore. Then we're going to select everything by clicking and dragging. We're going to go to edit, or sorry, object, expand appearance, which is going to create outlines for our registration marks, slash crop marks. Now the crop marks or registration marks are no longer an effect, but they are shapes in and of themselves, so we'll be able to work with them. Then we're just going to work on each of these images at a time. So we can ungroup the registration marks from the art layer and then just click on the art layer here. Click on our raster image. And this is when we're going to start doing the image trace. So we're going to go to window, image trace, and then we can mess with these settings. So I'm sure there are people who know how to do this perfectly the first time. I always have to mess with it a little. We definitely want to ignore white and we definitely want just one color. And when we're ready, we can hit preview. And that is going to process the image. So you could see immediately we lost our art. That's because it was a lighter color. Um, probably could have made it black first. But by increasing the threshold a little bit, we can get that back. So I'm just going to go as high with the threshold as I think would be best. Going to decrease corners, increase noise, increase paths. And that is getting closer to what I want this to look like. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So then we're going to go to Object Expand, Expand Object and Fill, and now we have vector outlines of this artwork. And we are gonna do the same for this one. So we're gonna ungroup, click on the artwork, go to Image Trace, Ignore white, increase the paths, less corners. Just 
do a little adjustment. And expand. Now we have vector lines for this as well. This is an optional step, but um, I'm going to show you how to add trapping if that's something that you want to do. Trapping is just a way to overlap the line drawing and the color layer so that there are no gaps between the two. You can see right now, like at the top of the ear here, there is a white um, gap between the line art and the color layer. And by adding a little bit of extra thickness to the color layer, we can eliminate those gaps. This also helps with registration on the press because letterpress isn't perfect. And, and some of these off registration things are, are what makes it really beautiful and charming. Uh, but if you do want something with really tight registration, adding the trapping can give you a little bit more uh, flexibility and it will be a little bit more forgiving. So we are back to how our plate was with the two separate uh, layers next to each other. I had just overlapped them to show what the trapping can fix. Uh, and now we're going to add the trapping. So I'm going to hit A on my keyboard, which is going to give us the direct select tool. And we are going to drag our arrow around the color area. And we're just gonna drag our fill here over to our stroke and you could see um, there's now just a little bit of a stroke on the outside which I'm then going to expand. It really doesn't look that different to the naked eye but it can help with registration. One thing we didn't cover was zooming in and taking time to really refine your artwork and make sure that everything is clean from the trace. So I might go in and look at, you know, a little jagged edge like that and just use my pen tool to get rid of any of these little boogers hanging around um, or any ugly corners that I don't like. Um, this is an extra step and it, it takes a little bit of time, so I'm not going to go too in depth on this, but it's good just to zoom in and then, you know, I have the pen tool selected with the subtract. And I'm just looking around for any areas that I don't like. The other thing you could do is hit A on your keyboard again. And then if you select a point, you can go in and move things around and just really clean everything up. But for things that are so teeny tiny, um, it's unlikely that they would have a really big impact on your final design. But it is an option to go through and clean everything up. For the final boxcar preparations, um, they prefer everything to be in 100% CMYK. And right now you could see we have our color layer still in a color because it's easier to work that way because we see it as the color that we're going to print it but in order for the plates to be made it actually needs to be a hundred percent cmyk black so if we click around here we could see well this is a stroke so we definitely need to outline that this black even though it looks the same as this black is actually a rich black, meaning it's built of many different uh, percentages of C, M, Y, N, K, whereas this shape is what we, oh, no, it's not. This is also a rich black. So we want to change these to 100% K in C, M, Y, K. And of course, we don't want this color anymore, we want it to be 100% CMYK. So the first thing I'm going to do is select everything. Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. If I had any text in this file, this is also the time where I would save a new copy and then I would outline all the text as well. 
Um, you always want to save a copy when outlining text in case you ever need to make text edits because once the text is outlined, you can no longer edit it. But in this design, we don't have any text, so we won't get too deep into that. Now we're going to select our artwork. And we're going to set the color to 100% black. Now everything here is 100% black. And then we're going to select the crop marks, which we did outline, I think. I'm just going to do it again just to be safe. And then change this to 100% black as well. And now everything in our file is 100% CMYK black. To check to make sure everything is right, I like to click on just one part of it and do select same fill color. And if everything that I made is selected, then I know that everything is 100% CMYK black. Now we're ready to save. So from here, you would just go to File, Save As, and then save it as a PDF, and you're good to go. Obviously, different places that make photopolymer might have slightly different requirements, and maybe even Boxcar has some slightly different requirements. This is my best interpretation of their requirements, and I've ordered with them a handful of times before and never had a problem, but um, with any of these things, it takes uh, trial and error and experimentation, but hopefully this is a good starting point and baseline to help you get from Procreate to a photopolymer plate.